to the stage your president, Manette Batters. Conference, I'm well aware that I am standing between you and your lunch, and that's never a good place to be. So look, uh, I'm not going to be long. Um, I, I think it's been a, a fascinating insight. Steve, I, I said to so many people on the way in, if you want to know what's going on, listen to this man. We know a lot more, but we still don't know what's going to happen, do we? Brilliant, though. Thank you. Um, uh, look, I, I can't tell you uh, how much I take the responsibility of this role very close to my heart. Um, we are in a, an extraordinary time and the role of the NFU um, has never been more important. And, and that's on many, many different levels. Um, the warm words yesterday from Michael Gove, um, I have to say in all honesty, I, I was horrified when I read his uh, speech the night before. It, it's nice to have one sentence saying that I'm, I'm a, a good person to work with. Um, in every paragraph, it was just too many warm words. Um, so look, for, for me, th this whole standards piece, uh, what we are asking for with the commission to report by the end of the year, th this has been front and center of the entire Brexit conversations we've been having with government, because I, I do think it is the key. I would go as far as saying it is even more important, probably far more important than the, the future budget, which is incredibly important too. But if we don't get this standards piece right, uh, I think that sets our, our industry back in a, in a way that we've not seen before. So getting his commitment yesterday and, and trying to make it very clear, this is not about warm words, you know. We will not be judged on our great speeches, on our sound bites. We will be judged on what we, will be, what we deliver. And I ultimately will be judged on what I deliver. And I take that role very, very seriously. And I know I speak for the entire office holder team. Uh, for Guy, Stuart, and John Davis, and Allard in Wales. Um, but it's also, Brexit takes up so much time, our, our planning for the future. I mean, I've done 18 bilaterals with Nick and the Brexit team. So building the relationships across Europe, making sure that the farming unions across Europe are lobbying their governments to make sure we get a deal. Um, it, it's been an extraordinarily frenetic time. But we can't just focus on, on Brexit. We have the day job uh, to do, and I'm absolutely delighted that the NFU has not taken one single person off the day job. The day job for all of you, our members, is as relevant as it's ever been. But then we come on to a whole new policy, to looking to the future, and we can't stand still. I don't want to be a president of the NFU that reacts to future changes. I want to be shaping the future. I want to be owning that plan. So I was delighted that we were able to host the first environment conference on the 11th of December 2018 and publish our first environment report, wanting to take back control of the environment for our farmers. Michael Gove has committed to a food strategy, something that I know I have been saying to all of you, we need. I've been saying that for the last six years. I don't want to wait and react so I think it's been a really important piece of work for us to bring a food strategy together. It has four fundamental pillars, uh, one being the moral imperative of producing food, the second one being integrity and standards, the third one being health and nutrition, and the fourth and final one being agriculture's relationship with nature and tackling climate change. That work stream is well underway working with the wider industry, working with stakeholders, working with the supply chain. So when we come through this, uh, whatever that deal, whatever we end up with after the 29th of March, we're working very closely with Henry Dimbleby right now. It is in place. It is ready to go. Uh, rather than saying uh, to Michael Gove, well, we actually, you know, if we were going to do it, we wouldn't have done it like that. Owning the plan for the future, I think, is a hugely important part of what we do. Um, but I just want to finish, really, um, by, by thanking our, our members of staff. Right across, we have 200 people in headquarters, 200 people who every single day are working on all of our behalf, trying to create a better environment for us to farm in. But our Brussels office has been in the most extraordinary place at this time, fielding questions from member states, 
uh, having all of us going out there. I go out there uh, once every two months. Um, our London office, we've now got a much bigger London office. It's, it's really allowing many more staff to work in London from headquarters. Seismic change that has had to be driven. Our regions, the lifeblood of the NFU, our regions dealing with you on a daily basis and our group secretaries as well. A, a massive thank you to all of you. Um, you're going the extra mile for our members and we really, really appreciate it. I guess the take home message for me is I go to conferences, I went to conferences to get inspired, to go back to my farm and feel like I could conquer the world. I want you to go back to your farms and feel reinvigorated. I know there are challenges out there, but we have one of the most prized markets on the planet. And sometimes you need other people to tell you that. And when I meet with the Argentinians and the Canadians and the Australians and the New Zealanders, the many, many people uh, who see the UK market as what they call a prized market. The US said the other day, the untapped potential of the UK food market, it's our market. And I want to make sure you remain the number one suppliers to that UK market. We've been, as a union, we've been in consistent growth. We represent 47,000 farming businesses. For us as a team, we are constantly striving to grow the membership bigger, to grow our representative power. I want each and every one of you to be our activists on the ground. You know, the role of our union going forwards is so crucially important. I'm going to stop there. Um, I've got to thank you so much for coming. Jack Bobo, I think, summed it up. He said, we're going to see more change across the world in food production in the next 30 years than we've seen before. And I think he's right. And I think the UK is better placed than most to embrace those opportunities. Um, thank you very much. It's been a great conference. And have a safe trip home. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you.